of a week as, as far as the response to the program previously and we're very thankful that people are coming to understand better about why we limit our thinking when we talk about spiritual issues. And when we talk about what is true, uh, we go to not the subjective aspect of what seems to me, but you know, what is true in the sense of the objective Word of God. John 17, uh, Jesus prayed in verse, or stated in verse 17, sanctify them by your truth, your word is truth. He's making this prayer to the Father and that's where we get to our part. Now, if you're in the Little Rock area, I mentioned that the uh, Breckenridge Village Shopping Center, uh, the congregation that I do the work of an evangelist at on Sunday mornings uh, and support me and support this program partially uh, is uh, Little Rock Church of Christ. They're at the Breckenridge Village Theater uh, parking lot. You find us there, you'll see us uh, 9.30 Sunday for Bible study, 10.30 for worship, and uh, Sunday evenings we gather at 5 p.m. and then we have a, a, a good open forum Bible study at 7 p.m. and always open to private Bible studies, conversations. You'll have my phone number. My, my phone rings when this phone rings, 501-519-7778. Accessible and would love to study God's Word with you. We are on this we're on this quest. We're on this mission. Uh, we are looking for, you know, this is us together in Christ. We talked about in the first quarter the plan, uh, the, the cause. But now we're going to talk about the plan. And the plan we've seen, and I said last week, we have to make the commitment that if Jesus prayed, as John 17, 20 and 21 affirms, for us to be unified, then we have to say it is possible. It is possible. We have to accept it and then we embrace that and we begin to pursue that. So, the plan has a problem. The very thing that I started last week of our objective of the same mind and the same judgment as you well know is uh, one of our more difficult areas to come to the same mind and to come to the same judgment. Areas of judgment? Well, here is the contextual picture that we have there in 1 Corinthians 1, uh, 2, 3, and 4 about limiting our thinking, not thinking beyond that which is written, is that he was showing them that what they had embraced in their own intellectual capacity of this denominational way of thinking, that this individual, I followed his teaching, or he taught me, or he baptized me, and now I'm a part of his group. No, 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 no. No, you know, the preacher is not anything. It's the Word of God. It's what brings us together. So the problem had to do there. It, he said, be of the same mind and the same judgment. So we have a problem, but here's the thing. Just as the prayer of Jesus, and we had to acknowledge before we could move forward, it is possible for us to be unified, then we have to acknowledge it's possible for us to be of the same mind and the same judgment. This is the restoration movement, friends. This is how that it comes together. And I'm, I want to share something with you. This was actually from a, uh, Dr. Draper in 1984, I believe, is where the, when I got, obtained the copy of this book. <laughs> uh, it's about authority, the critical issue for Southern Baptists. And when you look at this, it's, it's pretty amazing because he observes the competing claims for truth. And we've had this discussion as well. Uh, these three possibilities are, and this is very important for you and I to all come together on this, far, on this part of what we're looking at, and that is you've got human reasoning, that is, it seems to me, and so you can have unity under the guise, un, un, under the condition that we all think or we're the same mind and the same judgment, but we're not it's just based on human reasoning. We agree in our human reasoning, not through the Word of God. We don't consult that. Or maybe we loosely consider it, but the final criterion is our human reasoning. Ecclesiastical authority is another thing. And that is where individuals enter into a, a denominational group, there is a hierarchy that is structured and whatever they say is the authority. When Jesus said, all authority has been given unto me, that is, Jesus has the authority and our limited mission is to go out and preach 
his word, confirming it as the testimony with the word of God, not ecclesiastical authority. We don't go to the hierarchy to find out what we're to believe. We go to the word of God and then we meet there at the word of God, which puts us uh, into number three. And these are the three that he's observing for critical issues for Southern Baptists. So we see any group, if they're really seeking, they can make the acknowledgement of this. Human reasoning, ecclesiastical authority, divine revelation. Now remember, the problem is being of the same mind and the same judgment, coming to an understanding of how we're going to get to this place. Here's his statement in the book, in this dilemma. Man has come, now come to the point where he feels that his own experience must be the final criterion by which all uh, is to be judged. He continues, remember we're on the same judgment, all is done by my experience. This crucial, even though a person may debate, this is crucial because even though a person may deviate only slightly from orthodox doctrines of the faith, he has shifted to another base of authority. He has nonetheless taken a very tragic step which may lead to further error. And I'll say this, it doesn't, it, it doesn't maybe lead to further error. It does lead to further error because that becomes that doctrine of human reasoning rather than the soundness of, pa of sound, pattern of sound words. This is what we observed in an introductory level last week. And these simple lessons will lead you, lead us all, should, to the same place. And again, a shorter quote from the book, How to Read a Book, by Mortimer Adler, a, a philosopher that has some unique things written about the intellect of man and being created in the image of God. But he says about the whole process, about interpretation, reading a book, is to decide it's directed toward the meeting of the mind through the medium of language. And here's what we make our petition and our plea regarding this. How else do we communicate? I mean, it is the medium of language. Now we may have body language, we may have written testimony, we may have speaking verbal, but th this is how we communicate. And so it is that uh, we say this about being of the same mind, being of the same judgment. Uh, here's how we become known. And Acts the ninth chapter when Saul who became the Apostle Paul was giving his, uh, he was bringing out threatenings and murderings against the disciples of the Lord and he got some documentation, some letters that he could go to various synagogues and, and arrest Christians and actually be part of persecuting and killing. And anyway, what it says is regarding when they went and had that discussion, you have a religious hierarchy body, and this is how the restoration looks. You have the religion that is in error and seeking to protect itself, man's religion, man's uh, hierarchy, man's paycheck, whatever it is that drives. But then there was this group going everywhere. They were being persecuted and they, they, it wasn't the money. They were go, and it wasn't the building. It wasn't the amenities. It was, they were being persecuted and they were going everywhere preaching the word. And you know what they became known as? The way. They were belonging to the way is what the text tells us. Belonging to the way. And so when we talk about this restoration movement, but what we're talking about is a way, and I, I would say this, it's about a way of life. It's about a unique group of people that are undiverted by pressure, persecution, or things that people may do against them. They are going to do what they are going to do, and nothing is going to change that at all. And when Jesus sent forth the apostles, the prophets, this was the orders, this was the directive. And I think that it's very important for us to ask ourselves this simple question. When we hear the gospel preached, do we hear it preached like Jesus had instructed his apostles and prophets to preach it? Because he says in verse 18, and we're coming up on the plan, who has the authority? 
Me, elders, you know, who is it? Where, where do we find the authority? My emotions? Where's the direction going to come from? Matthew 28, 18, Jesus, last words in the book, uh, the Gospel of Matthew. All authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Go therefore, making disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So, inclusive in this gospel from the authority of Jesus is that there is making the disciples, there's the conviction becoming a part of this is us together in Christ, Baptizing, how? Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And teaching to observe. And when we say all things, remember we had all things that pertain to life and godliness, and we don't have time, unfortunately, to go through this entire list. We'll take it up full screen. I'll walk through it uh, briefly since we're limited on our time, but I just want you to think. Is there a pattern of God's divine will? Is there a pattern? Now, we know this, and all of you can agree, and I think that we can just take this point and just take it home. In Genesis, the sixth chapter, when God instructed Noah, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Then God said, the earth is going to be destroyed. Save you and your family. And then he gave him instructions. And when Noah began to build the ark, when it came time to go select wood, he got, received, went and cultivated gopher wood. Now let's just suppose that he was walking down toward the forest where he was going to find the gopher wood. And there's a nice range of pine trees. And he says, you know, that will be buoyant. Maybe he has some analysis that he thinks would be better. But see, when God said to build the ark of gopher wood, then there was no other discussion. The direction was to bypass everything else and go get that kind of wood and to do it according to these kinds of specifications because that's what God had said. The same way with Moses and the tabernacle, specifications, incredible specifications. Uh, transporting of the Ark of the Covenant. Now, I wish I had time to really talk about this, but that is the occasion. In uh, First Chronicle, Chronicles uh, 15, where the, the apostle, I mean, excuse me, where David and the children of Israel were celebrating because they had found the Ark of the Covenant and it was displaced because of, of them being displaced. And it belonged with the people of the Jews. It belonged with the Jews. They, ca they get it. They put it, but then they put it on a new ark, a, a new ox cart. And when they put it on the new ox cart, uh, it stumbled, uh, put forth his hand and was struck dead. Now, David said that God had broke out against us. Uzzah lost his life and the party stopped when he said we did not consult him after the due order. The solution was to go back to the Word and see that God had instructed to carry it this way. Put this ring, uh, the rod through the rings on the side of the ark and the Aaronic priesthood would carry it. They didn't follow that model. But think of all of the human reasoning that went into that and also the ecclesiastical authority of David. He just said, hey, let's do it this way. Maybe the priests were involved too. That, I mean, if I was the priest who was going to carry it, I said, you know, it'd be easier to put it on this ox cart. It'd be easier. So human reasoning and ecclesiastical authority would come into play and a man lost his life and everything stopped and they had to park the ark until they figured this out. And what they did is it went to the Word of God. And they found there the pattern. We did not consult him according to the pattern. Same way with your life in Christ. Do all things Word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And Titus chapter 2, 11 and 12 tells us, the, the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men. It teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust, to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. We are talking about walking in the light. Talking about walking in the light.
there is a path in God's Word. It's a path, and it's limited to the light. Now, it exposes the darkness, it reveals it, but the path that we walk, the direction and the steps that we take, that next step that we take, is in the light of God's Word, in the light of God's will. This brings us, as we exercise in this pattern, to become of the same mind and of the same judgment. Now, with the few minutes that I have left, I want you to notice something as we turn to, in our first study, we had one slide that said church budget. A church budget. Because when we're talking about being of the same mind and the same judgment, oftentimes it has to do with when we come together collectively. But then, you know, the unique thing is, is there is a general consensus among most of the, us that believe that these are the things we engage in. I think we can agree. Singing, praying, giving of our means as we prosper, taking the Lord's Supper, preaching and teaching the gospel, loving communication, honor, respect, and unity. Now, we all agree with all of those things. At least I think that we do. But you know, I left out the little blue part there. Refusing to charge the church for that which I am personally responsible. Now you think about the programs and the things that are being engaged in now within the church. I mean, and not, not just the Lord's church, not excluding those professing to be the church that belongs to Christ. What I'm saying is simply that we fail and we're failing, and this is why so many families are crumbling, is this is the directive. And it's in 1 Timothy chapter 5, in verse 8, the apostle Paul says, if anyone does not provide for his own, especially those of his own household, he's denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. So we're refusing to charge the church for the things that we're personally responsible for. And in verse 16, he says it in this way. If a believing man or woman has widows, let them relieve them and do not let the church be burdened that it may relieve those who are really widows. We have a responsibility. We have things that we engage in in relieving really widows. We talked earlier about individual responsibility. How do we come to the same mind and the same judgment? Is we accept that personal responsibility and listen. For those of you that are engaged in these groups and you know, you've got the big basketball courts and you've got the big place to go and have your soup, ki you know, your, your kitchens uh, and, and, and your uh, place to have uh, uh, your potlucks and all of these kinds of things that are built for and maintained by the church. The money that was given here, it says, those of you that have indigent widows, you take care of them and don't let the church pay for it. But now you're going to tell me in this human reasoning or ecclesiastical authority because the elders made a decision that we're going to implement this basketball court. So you're telling me that I must refuse to let the church pay for the needs of my indigent familial widow but I can allow the church to pay for a place for my son and my kids to play basketball. You see, that's not human reasoning. That's reading from the Word of God. Do not let the church be burdened. We just don't put everything in the church budget that we decide that we want to, and isn't that where so much of the struggle comes from? So really we ask this question, and we're going to go back. This is previous lesson, this lesson, they're all going to tie and fit together. Do you believe the Bible is the Word of God? Yes. Now, what's the difference between one profession of faith and another? You know, it just may be a nuance in another gospel, which is not another, but there's some that would trouble you that would preach another. So it could be that. It could be the gathering of the human reasoning, and that group is there, the, but they profess faith. But the faith accepts being born of the Word, the sincere Word. Being born of the Spirit through sincere love of the brethren. The Word of God. Jesus' prayer that we would be united as you, Father, are in me and I, and you that they all may be one in us, comes to 
the difference between one and the other is are we going to stand? Are we going to stand together on that conviction of faith? Here's how we know. First John. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. That's the apostles writing in regard to their writings. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. We limit, we bring our thinking into this hearing, the hearing under the authoritative recognition of the Word of God as it directs our life. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. It can be seen. And we go to it, thus saith the Lord, to know that. The apostle again writing, imitate me as, uh, imitate, imitate me and keep your eyes on those who walk according to to the example that you have in us. Philippians 4, and I think our time is about to run out, but I'm uh, wanting you to realize, and I don't have time to read through it. Let's just go full screen. I'm going to invite you to do it. It happened when I preached it. I need to go back, I guess, and take the time. Philippians 4, 2 through 19. There were a couple of ladies that disagreed. <laughs> they were with each other, but they were doing the work of the Lord. said, look, agree in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. And then Philippians 4 is that part that tells us, be anxious for nothing, but in everything through prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known unto God. Pray, and then be thankful. And think positively. Think on these things. It tells us to do, the Bible instructs us. We're not unrealistic. We are thinking and seeking the outcome of the prayer of Jesus. And it is positive. It, that the world might believe. How? Be content. Apostle Paul expressed that. And more than all, maybe, put your trust in God. Denominations, division. Catholicism, Calvinism, worldliness, gossip, all of these bitterness and the release from the fear of death are all realized in these truths in the Word of God. My God will supply every need of yours according to the riches and in glory in Christ Jesus. Paul told us he trusted in God and our lives to work in us and through us. Let us put our trust in God to accomplish the th same thing as we embrace his word. The plan uh, has a problem. I simply say this, if there is a problem, then the problem is with us.